Hi everybody, this is Christine Bertram coming to you live from the hive in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Are you ready for another Thursday night stampin' session? <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> it is gonna be a fun one. You guys love the fun folds and we are going to make four awesome fun folds with you tonight. So get those pens and papers ready to take notes on what we're doing. And if you're doing the class live with me, I can't wait to make the cards with you. Let me find myself just to make sure I've done this correctly. <laughs> it's uh, always bap. Oh, yep. There it is. Hi, Luann Johnson from Iowa. Yes, I am definitely wearing a hot pink sweater tonight. <laughs> I haven't worn this one for a little while. I have had to... Uh, hi, Karen. I've been in the office every day this week. My boss is in town from Joy Z. And hi, Deanne from Michigan. And so I had to pull clothes out of my closet that I have not worn since I feel about last January or February. <laughs> so I have a sweater on. I don't think I ever wear sweaters very much, anyways. <laughs> hi, Deb. Hi, Jean. Hi, Danny. Thanks for sharing. Hi, Susan. Hi, Stacy. Multitasking with your meetings. I love it. Hi, Jean. Hi, Susan. So I want to show you guys some cards while everybody's starting to roll in because I want to give everybody time. I've got like, I think 34 people are doing the, maybe even 37. When we do roll call, we'll know how many people, but we have a lot of people doing the online version tonight. Uh, so as you guys are rolling in, I love it when you say hi and tell me where you're from and that you share the video. It's going to be a great video to share. Hi, D. It's going to be a great video to share with everybody. So yes, Danny's ready to stamp DPJs, Diet Pepsi computer glasses. <laughs> I know I hit 40 and I have to wear my glasses. Otherwise, I'm, I can't read that down there. Oh, I don't wear glasses unless I'm looking at a computer screen or a tablet. It's crazy. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Francie Freeberg. He's in the house. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Christy Warren. So I want to go over some swap cards that I got recently. Hi, Melissa from La Myra, my back porch, it seems like. <laughs> Hi, Laura. I want to go over some chicken swap cards that I got. I don't think I've shared these yet. I may have shared a couple of them, but I thought I'd share them real quick with you tonight before we get going. And I've gotten some happy mail. Hi, June. Hi, Anne. Hi, Megan. Woohoo, Megan. You were the first one to sign up for this class. I bet you are the most excited. Well, nobody could be more excited than Danny and Kathy, I think. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Hi, Kay. So we're going to go over some chicken cards. I got some happy mail that I want to share with you. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for sharing. And hi, Sandy. Uh, so we're going to go over some happy mail and then I want to roll through quickly to show everybody what's coming up again. I still have openings for a couple classes that are coming up. Hi, Katie. Hi, Arliss. Hi, Elizabeth from Australia. Woohoo! <laughs> Gail's in the house as well from Canada. I love it. So Kathy's joined us and Bonnie and John. You girls are awesome. We're up to 70 people already. This is amazing. So we're going to go over a couple cards that I have coming up for classes, and then we're going to start stamping. And guess what? Which way? This way. <laughs> we have another board full. <laughs> Six boards have been filled, and Kay, I need to put your name from your two orders on the board. So you already have two numbers. So because the board, since I know you're, oh, hi, Kay Weir. Um, Kay, your uh, little present went in the mail today for your prize, uh, but Kay Warren, your order, you have two numbers that you get to pick. And because you're going to be fresh with a new board, if you feel obliged to tell me the two numbers you want between 1 and 25, I will give them to you because you would be the first person and you have your free reign of any number on the board. <laughs> so we'll do the drawing for that. And then I also have the Love You Always cards from last week that I have to announce the winners. Exciting. Thanks for sharing, Kay. Hi, Kathy. All right, so let's flip this down real quick and show you guys what I got for some chicken cards and Happy Mail. So you may have seen, you may have seen um, these cards already. These, two of these cards are Naughty Nancy's. Naughty Nancy's on my team. But I know a bunch of you who are watching love the chicken. So I thought I'd take a few minutes. Hi, Marianne. Uh, I thought I'd take a few minutes and just show you those. I might not go into depth real a lot explaining stuff that's used. If you like anything, just remember you can always take a screenshot by hitting your two buttons or I don't know Apple phones very well. But uh, so look at this one. Isn't this adorable? You open it up 
and she did like a step card in here. Thanks for sharing, Melanie. All right, she put like a little box down here. So Nancy always makes the most amazing swap cards. She put a piece of clear acetate here. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, 17 and nine. Kay, I might not remember that. So please email me or text me. <laughs> Tell me not in the post or um, not in the comments. <laughs> a lot happens in the next hour and a half. I can tell you that. <laughs> yes, thanks, Danny. You're so on top of that. Thank you. So this is Naughty Nancy's card. She did fabulous. Hi, Jill. She's You're ready for class too. I'm just going through some chicken cards really quick. So this uses the all wired up. Um, big background stamp. Here's a little guy with a little, da he's a little baby. Daffodil Delight with some Melon Mambo. Look at this cute one with the banner streams going through here. Little chicken on the bottom eating a cupcake. Well, actually, he's smelling the cupcake. Danny, your top fan can go away if you don't comment a lot. <laughs> so make sure you keep, so Danny mentioned about the top fan. So how you, oh, this is a fun fold. Let's look at this real quick. How you get top fan is by, hi, Debra, uh, by uh, liking, commenting, sharing. So this one is like that and it, you see the back of the DSP there. So there's one. Okay, this chicken's got a lot of uh, activity going on with color. <laughs> so pretty. Yes, that is pink DSP. Back here, it is part of the Melon Mambo Brights um, DSP collection. Yes, that is Melon Mambo Pink DSP. Now this is Pink DSP. That is from the the floral one. Um, art, uh, art. Uh, it's in the annual catalog, you guys. Uh, it's with the hippo suite, I think. Or it's with, ah, you guys, I'm drawing a blank on this. It's a floral one. Art, see, it's, it's, it's different. Somebody's gonna look it up and they're gonna say, <laughs> what, I did a card with the hippo card with this. Oh, yes, back in the summer of last year. He has very wild colors. Very wild colors. Everybody likes different things. Here's one that's not so wild. This one's more neutral, natural looking, using the Pinewood Planks embossing folder. Uh, somebody told me when I say embossing, I sound like I'm from the East Coast. Hi, Marty. <laughs> Here's a cute little card too, and this one's got a fun little fold as well. Yep, catch the replay, Marty. I love that Facebook lets us do replays. Look at that, isn't that cute? Thanks for sharing it before you go. Here's one too. This one's from Lori, um, Karen. And the box card inside. Oh, you know that how to do that? What it is, um, you have your brown piece here, so and it's scored at the, in the corner here, and this looks to be one inch. So you score again here, and you score it again in an inch, and you score again in an inch, and then it just it just folds like this. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it starts here, and it's scored there. So whatever that is, probably five and three eighths inch maybe. So um, as long as I got you guys here, we'll tell you how long that is. It is, yeah, five and three eighths. Wow, that was awesome. So five and three eighths and then an inch and an inch and an inch and an inch. And you may have to trim that just slightly off a little bit. But yep, so that's how that one is. All right, this one has the acetate here. Kathy King made it, yay! <laughs> Kathy, Kathy was so sad yesterday. She started to watch me. You guys, <laughs> I am live usually on Thursday nights, <laughs> and it was really weird. Two people, Kay and Kathy, both at, both asked me about being live last night, and for a moment in my head before they even asked me, I thought yesterday was Thursday. So <laughs> we were really happy when we all figured out that yesterday was Wednesday, and I didn't miss my live, and Kathy didn't miss my live, and Kay didn't. But just so you guys know, I generally always have in-person classes every Wednesday, and almost every Monday. So I'm generally not live, and date night's Tuesday. So I'm generally only live on Thursdays. And then sometimes you guys catch me on random things. So <laughs> just wanted to tell you that. Okay, so this one uses um, the clear acetate and it says you're still a spring chicken. This one Jennifer made and it is cute. It looks like grass kind of in the background and it says you're, I love that spring chicken sentiment. Okay, you guys are gonna love this one. She put a tutu on the chicken, and this chicken is dancing in, hi, Alan. <laughs> the chicken is dancing in the, not in the rain, but in the field of corn. <laughs> that was uh, who Deb Snyder made that one. Super cute. So this is a sheer ribbon, and we also have a blackberry ribbon. So <laughs> yes, here's one with more rainbows um, in the background. This is that same designer paper that goes 
I think with this set. You guys, I'm drawing a blank. I'm so excited that I'm here with you live. <laughs> Hi, Mary Carls. Mary tried to watch last night too. Is that funny? Wow. We, you guys, it must have been the week. This is Kathy Miller's card. She is a phenomenal stamper, and I love when she does folds like this. It just makes the card a little bit different. I love it. This is a very natural looking card. I'd have to say if I could pick any card out of here, this would be my favorite one for the swap card. Um, they put a little baby bow on our chicken, and the happy birthday is on the fence. But hi, Carolee Crab. And then the field corn in the back. And then they did the blending brush with green and blue. So pretty. This one, the person, who was it? Judy Garza. She put a little spring thing here for the chicken. So you can buy those online, I think. They're just like little wire springs. And it makes the the chicken pop up and down. <laughs> Sorry, I had fun doing that. Like, it's not a stamp enough item to buy that little spring thing. Um, hi, Cheryl Thomas, but you can definitely get that. And here's another one. So Kelly did a fabulous Technique Thursday. Did you guys see it? Uh, give me a thumbs up and some hearts if you saw it. She talked about, um, I always say ombre, but it's ombre. <laughs> she talked about how you can make your own ombre. Hi, April. How you can make your own ombre paper. And so... This is the ombre paper you can get free for celebration till the uh, wobbles. Yes, that's what they're called, wobbles for this guy. Uh, you can get this free paper through February 28th. So, so those are some chicken cards. Artistry blooms. Thank you, Jean. I had the like letters formulated in my head for artistry blooms. I knew it was something with art, but I knew it wasn't art floral. So, oh, you guys love Kelly's video, yay. Okay, I got some happy birth, I got a birthday card. <laughs> hey, it's a month after, but hey, better late than never, right? Uh, the person, I didn't see the person in January and they're part of my club class, so they gave me the card at club on Monday night. Isn't that beautiful? Hi, Amy. Yes. This is, I, I loved all the chicken cards too, Christy. They're so cool. This one uses the Dandy Garden. So pretty with the bumblebee. We're going to be using bumblebee tonight. So, all right. And these are two swap cards I got from Wendy Cranford. She was in a swap that I participated in. You guys are never going to believe this. But she mailed me all of, I organized the swap. So everybody sent me the swap cards. And they were due to me by January 6th, I think, or January 5th. Well, she sent them all to me, and two weeks later, she got them all back at her house. The whole package was sent back to her three weeks after she mailed them. Then she mailed me my two cards. So she mailed everybody's cards independently, and then she mailed my two to me. Well, they got returned two weeks after she mailed them. Hi, Roxanne from Northern Pennsylvania. Uh, she mailed them and they got back to her house two weeks later. They finally arrived today. So you guys remember when I did the swap card showcase, I showcased a bunch of cards featuring almost every stamp set. Like that was a bundle and a suite out of the catalog. And these, I didn't have anything for Shark Frenzy and they were her cards. So I thought that I wanted to show you guys her Shark Frenzy cards. They were so cute. This card came from Arliss. Arliss used the um, Friends Are Like She Shells and she used the pearlescent paper and then she colored the shells. She used the die cut and we're using this stamp set tonight. And so I wanted to show you that. And Arliss, I wanted to let you know I got your little love note in here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I got the money, by the way, <laughs> for your come for the class. And Kathy King, I got your mail yesterday. Kathy loves to decorate the envelopes, which I absolutely love. It makes it awesome. She put my initials on the card with a little envelope from the kangaroo set. And so I wanted to show you her card. So here's one thing I wanted to show you guys. I get this a lot where people put uh, a protective layer over their card. And that is a tip for you guys. If you don't know that, sometimes when you have embellishments on cards, it can rip through the, um, the envelope. And I have an example here of a card I mailed and it came back to me. And this was inside an envelope and the little diamond here wrecks the envelope. And this was inside another envelope. So there was another layer. So Kiabi put, and a lot of you guys do put a protective card on the top of it. And look at this beautiful card. And it's really funny. I didn't look at this until right now, but it's the Artistry Blooms um, designer paper, I think, or it's the, um, it's the, the stamp that goes with the artistry bloom. It's very, very pretty, Kathy. And she used some of the ribbon from the snowflake class. And a love note. <laughs> I won't read it in front of everybody, but look at this. She put hug and closed. And so I love it, Kathy. Thank you so much. Um, I love when you write me love notes. Okay, so 
that's what I wanted to share for you guys for Happy Mail and Swap Cards. So just to let you know what's coming up next week, okay? I have kits available, you guys. I have 10 sets left for these three cards. It's using the Simply Succulents and the Hey Chick and the Ride the Range set. So if you guys are loving on the chickens, then this is a, a one that you'd wanna do. It's so good. Um, hi, Anna Revedu. <laughs> and there's Ellen, awesome. Yeah, so many, yes, Carly, so many pretty cards. I love them all. So if you guys wanna sign up for this, uh, it's free with uh, a $35 order. So uh, you don't need a lot. I mean, you, it may look complicated for you guys at home that don't have a lot of stamps. Hey, Melanie, uh, it, it's, um, you know, if you don't have a lot of stamps, but you could always put something else right there and you wouldn't even have to put the dude there and you'd have some really pretty cards. So I do have this class uh, live next week, Thursday. After that, then um, we have a celebration hoorah rah class. Hi, Jewel, and it is on February 26th, and I, have, um, I haven't even started thinking about kits, so I have any amount of kits left over. So if anybody wants to sign up for this class, that one's coming up later in the month, and that features all the different celebration products. So here's that ombre paper again with the donkey, the berry paper, the field and flower, and the balloon paper. Hi, Linda Hodge, and then your um, In Touch of Ink, or In T Touch of Ink. Hi, Deb Norman. Um, I saved the foam packing sheets from Amazon and cut them. Yes, that's perfect. Anything to help inside your envelope is great. Now, you guys, I shared this with you, I think on Saturday, I shared the ice cream class with you. And that is coming up for you guys. It'll be live on, I think, March 4th, but I have it in person. And I have four awesome cards that use the ice cream set. And you think you might have to have the stamps for it. Well, if you don't have these stamps, you can improvise and put something else here and you could put something else here. And otherwise, this is designer paper and that's designer paper. I have an awesome fun fold for you guys here with this card and we'll be making this live uh, March 4th. This one's a, a shaker card, guys. I haven't done a shaker card live with you yet. So that one's the shaker card. It opens up, it has a sentiment. This one's a fun fold. So I went crazy with fun folds this month, guys. <laughs> and then this one as well. So I have a VIP page. And to be part of my VIP page, you have to either be my customer that buys product from me or if you're on my team. That's how you're invited to my VIP page. And I share extra things in the VIP page, by like extra card samples. We have a birthday recognition and just, it's a different, it's the, a lot of similar community of stampers who are watching right now, but it's a little more special for the people that are in that group. So I have a special drawing that I'm going to be doing for the Ice Cream Corner class. I always do it because it's my featured bundle class. So for those people that are in the VIP page, you will have your opportunity to win the the sweet ice cream at half off. There was a video that I did last Saturday and as all you had to do was share the video and mark in that uh, post in the VIP page that you shared the video and you will have your name in for the drawing for the ice cream corner stamp set and bundle, or it's the bundle basically. So, so and then also you get a free set of cards. So basically you get the bundle at half off and you get a free class. So how does that sound? <laughs> wow, I think I gave everybody a lot of time to roll in here. Hi, Kathy Cornia. We have 100 people that are kind of rolling in and out, and we're gonna do a little roll call, and then we're gonna get to stamping. Who is so excited for the fun folds, you guys? I had 60 kits that I made for fun folds. This was by far my biggest day-to-day, -day, like monthly class, or like a class that I do. I've had 54. I think the poinsettias was 56 or 54 and the snowflakes was 56 or 54. But this fun folds was 60 and I had to turn six people down. I had to say no to six people. So it's always good to not wait till the last minute if you wanna sign up for a class. Cause I do run out of kits and I'm already on to the next class. And so I don't make a kit or two kits like just I don't pull them out of my butt like that. <laughs> so I'm already onto the next thing. So it's always good to RSVP early for classes. And if you don't know, if you want to place an order or do the, the payment version, it doesn't matter. Just get me your name so I can get it on my list. Because once I have your name on the list, then at least I'm making kits for you, right? Oh, hey, Janet. 
and loves the fun folds. Yeah, so speaking of fun folds, the next fun folds card class that I'm hosting is gonna be in June. You could already sign up for it if you wanted, I'll be honest, <laughs> you can. You just have to tell me that you want your name on the guest list. It's going to be, I think, the second week of June. And for those people that are in person for me, it's gonna be tied in with my catalog launch party. So I used to do a separate fun folds class and then a catalog launch party, and I'm gonna be doing the fun folds cards as the catalog launch party cards. So, so it's the second week of June, and I've got it four times that week. And so you guys can already sign up for it so you don't miss it. <laughs> oh, seeing your coffee cups in the back always makes me want to make a cup of coffee. Oh my gosh, Karen. So speaking of coffee, Danny totally called me out on coffee last week. <laughs> I drank a half a cup of coffee around 4.30, and I try not to drink any caffeine after 2.30 or 3. And I must have had a lot of energy with you guys in the beginning. And Danny's like, did you drink coffee or something? And I was like, oh, I did. So I had a lot of energy. And tonight I think I'm a little bit more mellow because I have, I went into work from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. So this girl's a little bit tired. <laughs> so I'm, I'm probably still perky, but not as perky as I was last week. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so fun folds. We're going to do a little bit. So speaking of the coffee cups, I have a shelf that's going there and it's at my parents' house. My dad helped me put some hooks in it and it's all prepped and ready to go. My carpenter put holes in the wall there. So all I have to do is put the, like put the board up and and it's in there. <laughs> that's how I hope it goes that easy. So next week when you see me live, there'll be a shelf there and all the coffee cups are gonna be hanging underneath it all nice like. <laughs> so I have a coffee maker in here and I've never made coffee in here yet. So there'll be a first for that <laughs> soon. All right, so roll call. Meg, I mentioned that you were the first one to sign up. So Megan, you were first. Danny, you were second. I That doesn't surprise me. And then Sandy Wicklander, you were third. That's funny. And then we'll go down the list. So then Mo and Stacy Burns, Kathy King, Barb Barco, Ellen Brover, Mary Carls, Vegabi, Kathy Stewart. This is your first class with me, Kathy. I hope you enjoy it. Kay Warren, Deb Norman, Jean Terwigger, Terwilliger, Lisa Spittler, Karen Wettstein. Are you ready, Karen? <laughs> you haven't done a class with me, I think, since last year. Uh, Leslie McMinn, Susan Rush, uh, Angela Orvis, Angela Knutson, Bonnie Gravelin, Dawn Kursky, Wendy Kruger, Lila Erickson, Deanna Stahl, Mary Bowman. Mary Bowman, this is your first one too online with me. Pam Newhauser, Michelle. Michelle, I don't know how to say your last name. Oletti, I guess, if I had to guess. Jill McMaster, this is your first class with me. Kathy Larson, Jean Maxwell, Latokia Trick, Christy Warren, Melanie Ho, How, I, I, I now remember if it's, because it's H-A-O, I don't know if it's Ho or How. Um, either way, you'll tell me afterwards, I'm sure. April Drain, Karen Forward, and Marilyn Rickard. You guys, 37 people are doing this with me live tonight. And I had... The, whatever 56 minus 37 is <laughs> 29 maybe I don't know no 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 that's wrong math is hard right now don't don't no don't knock me for not knowing the math right there but um, everybody else did there's live last week and they love the cards I had so many people that sat back and were like oh these are all so pretty so I'm so excited to make them with you so are you guys ready I think we're ready we should be ready so let me show you all the cards we're gonna make tonight we're gonna do the seashell one, and this is like an easel card that kind of holds up like that, and it's got a nice little sentiment on the inside. It's very soft and soothing. I tried to make this look like you were collecting seashells by the seashore. This, I'd have to say, you can never pronounce my new last name. Everyone always says it wrong, but you got it, Knutson. Okay, I didn't know if the K was silent, Angelo, or if it... Or if it wasn't silent. <laughs> so so normally like night, as in K-N-I-G-H-T, the K is silent. So this one's my favorite, guys. I absolutely love this card. This one's awesome. I love it. I love the daisies. And I love how springy and cheerful it is. April's ready. Yes. It smells so good. Taste so, oh, Sandy, you don't like coffee. So I like my coffee not black. Mm -hmm. It's got to have enough creamer in it that it doesn't taste like coffee, which... I try to do the minimal amount <laughs> without, so it doesn't add a lot of calories. But you guys, speaking of like that, I've done push-ups every day 
since the first, maybe I missed one day, but I'm up to 15 now. And I'm very happy that I do it before my day starts. I just 15 little push ups and that's it. I'm proud of myself on that New Year's resolution that I started February 1st. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I don't remember the name of this card, but it uses the pretty perennial set. And then this one is a Dutch Doors card. And so that uses uh, the strawberry set. So I have a little coffee with my flavored creamer. Yes. <laughs> and I found sunny syrups now. So I use a Chobani creamer and I absolutely love the Chobani creamers. Yeah, I, I have not graduated off of my training wheels from for coffee to have it black. My Aunt Marge, I don't know if she's watching tonight, but my, my Aunt Marge uh, said to me, eventually I will like black coffee. <laughs> I'm like, ah. I don't know about that <laughs> so all right so we're gonna start with the strawberry card guys this i would have to say i have if i had to pick three sets out of the the new mini catalog thanks danny thanks for everybody for <laughs> the good job on my push-ups <laughs> i have i think three favorite sets but i don't know about the hydrangea yet because i haven't even used it yet that's coming up soon <laughs> and so i know that i love the sweet strawberry and I love the kangaroo set. So I was super excited when I, I was working on these fun fold cards and I didn't know what sets I was gonna use. I just know I'm gonna do fun, four fun folds. So when I was like, oh, celebration paper. This is awesome because celebration paper is free. And I don't generally use whole pieces of celebration paper, but when I get it for free, that's when I, it doesn't matter to me. So I got packs of extra celebration paper. So I used a, a bunch of pieces here. Now that's out of the berry one. With the berry one though, it comes with a stamp set and um, it's free with a $100 purchase. So you're gonna get a pack of paper and a stamp set for free with a $100 purchase. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, uh, if you don't have a demonstrator as well and you if you wanna work with somebody, I have catalogs here I can share with you, but in the, stamp, uh, the celebration catalog, you get a stamp set and the paper and this strawberry paper is right there. You get that free with a $100 purchase. But I brought it in here, Caramel Macchiato. Yes, who cares about the spelling, Kathy? I had one when we went up to Door County. We went to Door County Coffee and uh, Tea Company and I had a Caramel Macchiato, I love it. Um, so you guys, the strawberry, so if you, so Marilyn just posted on here about the strawberry punch hasn't arrived yet. So there are, are a bunch of things on back order right now. So if you have it on order, it will arrive. I think I saw that the strawberry punch and the ice cream corner punch are on back order until February 22nd. And so as soon as that stock or inventory arrives in the warehouse, they will start processing orders and your back orders will start to arrive. So Marilyn, give it what are we in the 10th? So give it another two weeks, potentially two and a half weeks, maybe even three before it arrives because it said that it was going to arrive February 22nd. So so that's why your punch hasn't arrived yet. So I know I'm sad too. I, there's a couple things that I'm waiting on as well. But you guys, there's probably plenty of other things we can play with until our back order stuff arrives. <laughs> so, so sweet strawberry. So you guys, in your kits, you should have a whole bunch of things. And don't lose your three little diamonds. I cut three little diamonds for your kit. So they're in there, you know, with static electricity, stuff flies everywhere. So in your kit, you're going to have a piece of garden green. The garden green is 11 inches. Um, oh, you guys, actually, I have to cut this for you. I want to show you how I did it. Okay, <laughs> hang on. So I, sometimes I surprise myself. Sometimes I prep things completely and sometimes I don't prep things completely. So I wanted to show you how I, I started with this card. So <laughs> let's back up. So this is like a hot dog style card. So this opens like this, but it's cut off a little bit here. So what you need to do is you have your 11 inches this way and then it's scored at five and a half. But we only need eight and three quarters here. So I need to grab my trimmer. And uh, there's a, an arm that comes out. So this is the Stampin' Up! trimmer. There's an arm that comes out here. And what we want to do is get that to eight and three quarters. So, so you guys at home that are doing the kits with me, I've already done this for you. But sometimes it's nice to see how I do things. Hi, Brenda. You went to Starbucks today and had... a have a back order on the, their caramel for the car. So you couldn't get that one. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. So there's so many things that are on back order right now because of 
because of our current environment of logistics and shipping companies and everything. Oh, Megan, you almost missed the diamonds. I'm glad that you found them. So I cut that at eight and three quarters. So this is what I like to explain in class too. So when you are doing two of these cards, so you basically have two bases here and I'm gonna to try to hold the, put this right. So, so this is basically an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And if you would score this at five and a half, you're scoring both at the same time. So pretend this isn't cut. And what happens here is if you would cut this at eight and three quarter with this strip still here, then this strip in essence is, could be this piece that wraps around here. So out of one eight and a half by 11, you can get your two bases and one strip like this. And then you'll have to go into a second piece of paper and you can get another strip. So that's if you're making multiple cards. So what you would do first is score at five and a half this way. Then you would cut off at eight and three quarters, which gives you this piece. Then what you need to do is you can cut it in half and then you will score this. I hope that doesn't confuse people, but because everybody who's doing this class with me, you have yours already done. Uh, the other thing too I wanna explain to you is uh, this is a Dutch Doors card, and this piece right here is eight and a half inches wide, it's or long, however you wanna look at it. And this from here to here is four and a quarter. So if you go to wrap this around here like that, you're gonna end up with a gap in the middle here because of the curving around the paper. It has to roll around it and that takes up a little bit of space for your green paper. So what I did for everybody is I cut your paper at four and third, what is it, four and three sixteenths. So normally it's at four and a quarter. So what I did, and I don't know, I did it on this one, yes. I cut all of your paper, I shimmied off a hair, <laughs> more than a hair, maybe three hairs, whatever, a sixteenth of an inch is. I shimmied that off the edge of your paper. So this is truly not four and a quarter here. I wanna tell you that because sometimes when you're making cards later on and you can't get it to work exactly right, you're like, well, what did she do? <laughs> and then you spend all this time trying to figure it out. So this is a little trick of my trade here that when I, when I have that now, I've got enough for this to meet in the middle without having that gap there. And that's important for me. Um, so I know that you could have a little gap there if you don't mind it, but I, I didn't wanna have the little gap. So the other thing too, when you do a Dutch doors card, you could have two choices. You could have it be one that lays like this, or I've never done one that lays like this. So. I did mine horizontal. And the reason I did it, you guys wanna see where I got my idea from. I cased this little card right here. I participated in a demonstrator event a couple years ago, and this was one of the make and takes. And it was a sideways Dutch door card with this little chicken. I think that was from two years ago. It wasn't this last September, but the September before. And so this is where I got the idea to do this card. And so again, this one is a little bit smaller. I made mine, you can see I made my card slightly bigger because I wanted mine to be a traditional size A2 card. But there you go, there's my inspiration for it. So you guys, I want you to see that like when you see this layout, you can totally tailor it to whatever stamps or paper you have at home if you wanna redo it. So what we have here then, um, <laughs> Kathy's gonna try them all, yay. So Kathy, I'll have the PDF. So Kathy's on my team. She's on the Be Happy Stampers team. And because she's on my team, she has full access to all of my PDF tutorials from the day that I started doing PDF tutorials, which was probably the summer of two years ago. So this coming summer will be two years. So every month, I would almost say every month, but every time I wrote a PDF tutorial, either for the monthly classes or for fun folds. Hi, Marcia from Florida. Uh, so Kathy has access to my PDF tutorials. So that is a perk of being on my Be Happy Stamper team is that you have free reign of my PDF tutorials. So I grabbed my bone folder and I burnished it. So I'm kind of prepping myself here to put this together. Um, so that's gonna go on here like that. And then you guys in your kits, you should have a square that is garden green, that is, I believe, three by three, the DSP, um, hi, Diane and Diane. <laughs> um, and then the back side is this. And some people chose this side in the online class, or the in-person class, they chose that. But I like that gingham look there. In your kit, you'll also have 
your two strawberries. So this strawberry paper is from the DSP on the back side. So this is the back side of that. So you have your two strawberries. I've punched out your hulls for you, so you have those. You have a white square, which is where you're gonna need to do some stamping. You have your white inside. Now, here it is, guys. Because I cut off a 16th of an inch here, I also cut off a 16th of an inch here. Otherwise, it would have gone up too high. So, <laughs> hi, Melanie Kruger Nickel from Wisconsin. Nice to have you here. Uh, so, yes, Deb, you didn't know that. Oh, my goodness. So, Deb just joined up, to join my team a couple weeks ago. So, Deb, yes, go to the file section of the Be Happy Stampers and download all of them. <laughs> so, you have them. So, I had to cut off a 16th of an inch on this white piece as well. So, it's not four and a quarter. It's actually a 16th less. And then you should have your pieces of strawberry DSP. One will go on the front of your card here, and then these two will go here. Now, I thought, well, you guys could make your card go vertical if you wanted, but you really can't because your strawberries will be crooked then. So you definitely want to keep the card horizontal. And then you have, this was my scrap, so let's get him out of the way. Um, yes, Marsha, you will definitely have to come to Fond du Lac for one of the classes after you get back. That would be awesome. You are always welcome to come to the hive. <laughs> Melanie's joining us from Yuma, Arizona. Yay. Okay, let's do some gluing because I have a lot of pieces going on here and I want to make sure that I don't confuse anything. So I always am very careful when I glue paper because I don't want to like forget to put ribbon down. But in this case, there's nothing keeping us from gluing a few of these things. Um, in the time before end of February, yeah. So that so this paper too. What Kathy is saying that it goes till February 28th that you can get this paper as a free item, and she might miss out on it. Oh no! So I just prepped a whole bunch of things here, guys. So I use liquid glue a lot. And what's gonna happen, let's get this out of the way. This is gonna go on our garden green mat, like that. And then let's get this guy going on here. So you should have a little green margin. So with the liquid glue, it really allows you to have time to maneuver it around. And then we've got this guy right here. So wanna make sure your strawberries are going the right direction for that. Um, yes, Lori, you can definitely purchase my PDFs. So what you do is you go to cardsbycrispy.com and I have an online store in my website and it is called online classes, I think, or online PDFs. And anytime I do a fun folds class, if I do a bundle class, a bundle or a sweet class, they're kind of the same thing, like the ice cream where I had that there, that's a sweet bundle class. I have, I've always put those in there and sometimes I put random ones in there as well. So yes, they're for sale. How I do my PDF tutorials, like this one will be in there in a, by the beginning of next week, I think. Uh, how I do my tutorials is they're $10 or they're free with a minimum $20 purchase. So if there's some Stampin' Up! product that you want, and you want to put a small order in, you could go ahead and tell me that you put an order in and which then tell me which PDF tutorial. And then basically they end up being free. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here? I put a little bit of glue here. That goes on the back side. So it's going on the back side and then those arms are wrapping around the front. So what I want to do is make sure I'm flush on the bottom here and I want to make sure I'm as straight as possible and that when this comes down, everything just meets really nicely. I know, Kathy, I love the berries. I wish that that berry paper would be carrying over too. It's so pretty. Okay, let's make sure they're straight <laughs> and going the right way. So basically that opens like that, all right? Now, we can go ahead and let's glue this on here. And so by glue, when I say glue, I don't always mean liquid glue. I, like I should say adhere probably. So we could go ahead and adhere this onto here. We have to make sure we don't put any adhesive on this side because if we do, it will shut your card. It would be called a trick card then. <laughs> and look at this, I'm down to my last few dimensionals and then I can throw this sheet away, you guys. This always makes me feel happy when I get to the end of a sheet of dimensionals <laughs> and I get to throw it away. So let me show you my trick for putting the dimensionals on. I do not wanna risk going over the edge, so what I'll do is I'll put one there and I'll put one there 
and you see I put one on this side because then I don't have to guess where to put it there. And I have one left here and it's gonna go there. So in essence, I've got a dimensional here, here, and here, and then there will be one on the end. So, and with that, that means I can throw away my piece of paper there. So happy about that. Now this is exactly the distance from this point to this point fits right in line with the card here. It might be just a hair over, but what I'm doing is I'm matching up this point to this point. Put this set in the just and um generally, you know, Dad, that's a good question. Do they put stuff from celebration into the annual catalog? They've done it from time to time. They did it with the country floral embossing folder that it was in celebration and then it carried over to the, the annual catalog. That I think that's the only time I ever remember that happening. So now we have to do a little stamping. Um, Diane said, I don't understand what DSP we will use once this is over. I know that we're gonna have to make our own DSP with stamping this stuff <laughs> to make our own. I mean, it went per like that DSP goes perfectly with this. I love it. So this is what we're gonna do for stamping. We're gonna put, so on here on the inside, I've got a strawberry that I put down here. And then we're gonna stamp some of the greenery stuff and make our foliage. And the colors that I'm using are real red. And so this is a two-step stamping process. There's a any and an outie, like your belly button. And I always like to stamp the outline first. When I stamp the outline first, it allows me to see very easily where to stamp the inside. So when I do this, I got my foam pad over here, so I don't need to stamp or squish really hard in it. I'm just gonna go right to the bottom corner, just a little good pressure right there. And then remember to stamp off a couple times. Now for the inside, you have, oh, I'm, I'm glad you like the tip, Kathy. So on this one, you have two choices. You could stamp it at full strength or you could stamp at second strength. So that's called first strength and then that's second strength. So it just depends on how light you want it. But I like the thought of putting it on second. Oh yes, you're right, Jean. The small balloon punch carried over. I do remember that from last year and it's in the current annual catalog right now. So I don't think I've ever remembered them carrying over paper though from celebration. Okay, so there's our strawberry, our first and second, um, first strength for both. I'll stamp off there. And then I need red also here. So in this stamp set, there's a lot of awesome sentiments. There's happy birthday, you sweet thing. That was so sweet of you, just for you. Hello there and thank you. And I love the scriptiness of these words. I just, and I love that there's different sentiment occasions in here. So we need the thank you. And that's already on a, a block over here. And as long as I have the red open, I was going to do that. And that fits, a, oh gosh. So this is the hard thing about using blocks that are just slightly bigger <laughs> than the stamp. Is It's really hard to see it. So you know what? We're going to fix that. I thought I could make it work. Um, you, yeah, I know. I can almost taste the strawberry too. Oh, it's just my, I'd always go uh, berry picking with my mom and dad and my grandparents. And my grandpa always said they never weigh you when you leave the berry patch. <laughs> so eat. <laughs> and then we did. And we'd eat enough and we were full. And it probably wasn't the right thing to do. But hey, grandpa said we could do it. So we did it. <laughs> so I stamped the thank you along the bottom. And I wanted to do that before I do the greenery so that I don't uh, conflict with where the words are. So that's it for real red. So we can put the real red. Oh no, a grumpy face. <laughs> Why did you give me a grumpy face? Because I ate strawberries? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so don't forget, I'm going to clean these for Brandon so that they're all nice and clean. This is the chamois. It came up in the VIP group that Danny was wondering about where these cases come from. And the cases come from Stampin' Up. When you buy the chamois by itself, you do not get the cases with it. They're sold separately. So just so you guys know that, you can get a pack of the cases um, when you place your orders. Okay, I think that was everything. And let's get these guys out of the way because I'm using blocks. So then now we're going to stamp a little of the greenery. So there's the strawberry uh, foliage. And that's going to be in garden green. Yes, just like a jar of pickles in the store. I look at them in my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I don't get that with, with pickles so much, but if it's like a baked good or something, if I'm going through the bakery at festival, then I definitely, I, I gotta avoid it because otherwise I'll wanna buy things because just seeing things makes you hungry. So I did something special with this. I didn't just stamp this right in the middle. If you were to stamp it right in the middle, you wouldn't see a lot of the greenery and stuff over around the edges. So how I stamped this is I put one off to the side. So it's, you know, don't be afraid to stamp off your paper. That's okay to do. So you can see here, I've got a flower there, but I wanna try to get two flowers and another leaf down here. So I'm gonna ink up again and put a leaf down here. And then I'm gonna try to get two flowers up there. And I'm gonna do that by turning my stamp upside down, more or less, and putting two flowers at this direction. So that's how I stamped the greenery on the back. And I know in class when I did this live, a lot of people, like in person, people think that I just might just stamp that right in the middle once. And so, nope, it's not like that. That's my, <laughs> my little bit of trick. And then we have to do our little greenery on the top for the strawberry. I have a hard time with this because when you stamp over the top of the strawberry, the green on top of the red kind of mesh is weird, but there's no way around it unless you would mask that, and that is too much to do. <laughs> That's a lot of work. So we're done with the garden green, and you can put that over here. So now I think we just have the rest of assembly and a little coloring to do. So let's make a little room and make Brandon proud. I don't know, Brandon, are you watching with your mom? So we'll clean off our hull and then we'll clean off the greenery. Once you start into your chamois, you guys can see I put a brand new chamois in here. I just started this last week or the week before. And it eventually gets completely full of color and that is okay. That means it's doing its job. You guys, we have to think of our, our stamping items as tools, not jewels. They're meant to be used and loved. <laughs> okay, so our inside, I'm gonna leave this as a thank you card. This is gonna be a gift to somebody that wins the, because I always give away the cards I make live. So I'm making this as a thank you card so I can thank whoever it is that wins it for watching my live. No, Brandon tonight, okay. You'll have to tell him that I did good tonight, Angela. And I mentioned him and I wanna make him proud. <laughs> so there's that and that. And now we have this little bit here. So I'm gonna pop that up with some dimensionals. Look, I get to pull out an already started sheet. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put, I believe, five of them in here. I usually like to do the four corners and then the middle. And with this, you also have to be careful not to go too close to the edge because part of the edge is hanging over there. So when you're doing your dimensionals, just be cognizant of, of that. And this just gets centered in our card like this. And I also have some flowers there that I have a So Saffron marker. So if you guys don't have a blend that's the light yellow, you could use any marker that you have. It doesn't have to be a Stampin' Blend. But if you do, I did use the Stampin' Blend in light So Saffron. And what we can do is prep our strawberries and then we'll know where to color our flowers. And I had a hard time with the seeds. I didn't know if the, <laughs> you guys, I didn't know if the seeds were supposed to go with like the pear or like a strawberry. So on this one, <laughs> the rounded is on the top and there the rounded is on the bottom. Apparently, I did not know <laughs> when I made my sample card. And when I made this card, I made them, or this, this when I punched this out, the, the rounds were on the bottom. <laughs> Oh, I, I felt like maybe I should Google it. And then I don't think I ever did. I got a little bit extra glue there. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue here to put our hulls on. Don't worry, we're gonna do some Stella action here very soon. She is not out on a date yet. So we're gonna use her. And how I put the strawberries on, I'm gonna just kind of set them like they're hanging out like a little pear here. And not like as in a fruit pair, but as a P-A-I-R. So these flowers, we're gonna color them all. So grab your blend. And I did not do by the magic of TV here, guys. So you can just watch me color. <laughs> and it will go really fast because there's not a lot. And I'm gonna just color these three full ones. And then there is a little partial one there. And that's all we're gonna do for coloring. Oh yeah, the strawberries need chocolate. 
drizzled all over them. You are so correct. Then before we put the strawberries on, grab your Stella pen. And I did Stella the leaves. So when you Stella the leaves, it will bleed. It'll make the greenery bleed. And so right there, you can see the difference between that one and that one. That one's white, where this one's kind of shaded green. It makes it look softer. And you don't need to do anything where you can't see it. So I'm not gonna bother with those two leaves, but I'm gonna do the little bit that peeks out there. And we're gonna do the one over here on the left. And then while well, we got Stella going here, we're gonna Stella our hulls. And if you really want to go crazy with Stella, Stella your strawberries. Now it's not chocolate covered, but you can say that they're Stella covered, which is pretty good too. <laughs> You're not gonna be eating them anyways. So, all right, so Stella did her work. So Mary, you like the fold, that's awesome. Hi, Ruth Nicholson. All right, so how I put my strawberries on. To the naked eye, you might not know what I did when you look at these, but this is behind the curtain. <laughs> you um, uh, will see what I did here. I put a dimensional at the top of each one. That's it, so that the top is what's popped up, and then I definitely glued the tips of the strawberries flat. I like to do dimension in stages, and <laughs> it, yeah, it's gonna be hard to pick just one. They were so pretty. So when I do this, then I've got my strawberries flat and then it looks like they're popping out at you. And I've got these just offset a little bit with a little bit different height going on. And there we go. Last but not least, you guys all have, hi Rebecca. Um, we all have some diamonds or rhinestones in your kits. I'm so excited because I have two left right here. And my take your pick tool is right here. We'll use that to get two of them. I gave you all the same size and they fit very nicely right inside the flowers. Okay, so there's two. I can use up that little sheet. <laughs> Got some big ones left. Now, I wanted to wait to open this up in front of you in case some of you have never seen me do this. When you have embellishments like this, there's always this flap back here and it gets sticky and it's a pain in the butt. So generally what I do when I start a thing of rhinestones or embellishments, I just slice it open on the back end like that. And now this just slides back and forth nicely. And then we'll get our last diamond. And I always slide it on the side that doesn't have the hook with that paper. So now this is perfect. And then when you have a little bit of leftovers, you can just slide that in with those. And now you've just consolidated and you can throw away a package. <laughs> I get excited over that kind of stuff, <laughs> throwing away things. All right, so we have our first card done, guys. We are done with the Dutch Doors strawberry card. Made it into a thank you card. So there is number one. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so then we are going to move on to, I'm trying to find spots to put things. Okay, let's move this stuff out of the way so I don't lose anything. And which one do we want to do next? That is always the million dollar question. Whew. Well, you know, I always save my favorite one for last. <laughs> so let's do this guy. Not to say that this isn't a nice card, but it's just, it's fun. I like it. Um, it's like, popping in briefly from very snowy and slick Eastern Oregon. Hi, Feline. How are you, girl? Okay, so we're going to do this guy. Hi, Suval. And this one features the friends are like seashells. And this is another one where I used a lot of designer paper, so you guys didn't necessarily have to have the stamps. Uh, you guys are loving it. Yay. Hi, Randy. So I, I made this card in mind so that people that don't necessarily want to buy the seashell stamp set don't have to. All I basically did for stamps out of here was use a nudgy now to come up with a $100 order. <laughs> well, if you buy the strawberry bundle, it's like $32 or something like that. And then you just need a little bit more and you get that paper for free. Mm -hmm. So I just used the stamp sets out of here, or so, sorry, the stamp sentiments out of here. And we'll just keep them right there so that they're ready. The colors in this cut, you're watching. Oh, you are watching her too. <laughs> Hi, Susan. <laughs> um, so, very, very nice set. If you are a, a beach lover, a seashell lover, you're going to definitely want to put this one into your arsenal. This die right here is what I showed you earlier 
with the card that Arliss made me. So this is what this die here cuts out that awesome shape here of all the shells. And you can cut them apart or you can keep them together. And this is a bundle that you can buy all together. And there's an awesome embossing folder and it matches with this as well. Super, super cool suite. Super cool like bundle of products. Everything is awesome. <laughs> like the Lego movie. Everything is awesome. And <clears throat> what I did though is I really tried to showcase the designer paper that this is actually not celebration. This comes from the mini catalog. And this paper here is the back side. These two are the back side. So in everybody's kits, you have a bunch of pieces again. You should have three opal rounds, so don't lose them. You know, because of static electricity, you should have three opal rounds. You'll have a piece of linen thread. Yes, Jean, you love this set. <laughs> I think I remember that. And then you have a piece of braided linen trim. So these two you can set aside for right now. In your kits, you will not have, I did not die cut all your shells. I promise you, I did not die cut yours. I die cut mine, so I was ready for the live. But you guys start die cutting. <laughs> if you're doing the live with me, you can start fussy cutting all of this. So the, these seashells, you should have four of them. And they're all a mixture. So the paper came as a full 12 by 12, and it was full of this shell, that shell, the conch here, that sand, like it's not a sand dollar, whatever that one is but some were blue, some were red, some were yellow, and some were tan. So I cut all of them and then I put them on piles, okay? So you might have, you have four things like this, start cutting them apart and they are just, they're gonna work because they all the colors kind of look nice together, okay? Then you have a piece like this, which is a basic white and it's one and three eighths by four and a quarter. And that's this piece right here that is banner punched on the end. And then you have a piece of designer paper. So this is how that paper came. It had all these different shells and I, I cut around everybody's, but I did not cut yours precisely. <laughs> no. So that's what goes right here. You'll have a piece of, this is also from the seashell designer paper. It is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And it is a match for the seaside spray, which is four by four. Then you have a four and a quarter by five and a half. So five and a half by four and a quarter, that's your base. And then lastly, you have this piece of white. This white is four inches and it's nine and a quarter this way. And it's scored at five and a half. And it's also scored one more way. So before you guys start getting glue happy, just let me show you how I made this because this is the one of the important things um, for making this is making it sure it's scored correctly and at the right spots. So I'm going to grab out my cutter again. And so we said, oh, let's pull this out. This is nine and a quarter. So it's nine and a quarter by four. And so this measures four inches this way. And thanks for sharing, Sharon. <laughs> and then this is nine and a quarter this way. And I said it was at scored at five and a half. Uh, excuse me. Actually, it's scored at five and a quarter. Yep. So this is five and a quarter by four, which is basically the size that you need to make yourself this regular size mat for here. This is where the magic happens right here. You need to score the paper. And let's see, this goes like this. You need to score the paper. And you guys have yours done already. But what you do is you go from this corner to this corner in your machine or into your whatever scores for you. So you'd line up the corner here with the corner here, okay? And you score, you don't cut. So you have scoring and you have cutting. Go get this cutting out of the way. And what you do is you score it. So all of you have done this for you. So basically what you will do is you're gonna fold your paper this way and then it folds this way. And you want to try to get them straight as possible. Hopefully I did a good job cutting. So the, in the opposite, I didn't realize I've been using it the wrong. <laughs> see, you learn things. Um, okay, Jenny, I'll see you later. Um, so now that goes like that and you wanna make sure, so some people in class did it this way, right? That's not the right way to do it. It's folding the wrong way. You need to make sure that your five and a half is on this side. And when you fold it, the bottom flips back like that. That is how that folds, okay? 
There's not a lot of math involved at all with it. You just basically score it at five and a quarter, and then you go from corner to corner and score it. So grab your bone folder, and then you're gonna burnish your edges so they're nice and crisp like that. And now we can do a little bit of assembly. There's not a lot of stamping, so I hope you guys are getting your little shells cut here. <laughs> All right, thanks for sharing. Oh, hi, Cheryl. Okay, so we can do a little gluing. There's nothing holding us back from gluing the patterned paper here to our four by four. So let's put that on here. And there's no up or down or rhyme or reason to this pattern paper. It's so cool. It looks like water to me uh, out in the ocean with waves. So <laughs> I tried to make this card feel real. <laughs> then here's my thing. I have a hard time gluing stuff before I stamp my sentiments. So, but you really only get one shot at stamping this white paper because you can't flip it over because it won't bend the right way. So it won't fold the right way. So you really gotta get your sentiment stamped here right the first time, okay? No pressure, none at all. So we're just gonna make it happen and make it right. So let's grab the piercing mat because we do have photopolymer stamps. So let's get this like that. Now, the trick with this is that you don't wanna stamp your sentiment right in the middle though because if it's right in the middle, then it won't be centered nicely when you put this on here. Hi, Carol. And that goes right there. So I temporarily just set that here while I am doing my stamping so I can center it. And I use Seaside Spray on the inside and I put the birthday sentiment in there. So let's put that. And I don't always put my stamp straight on my blocks because I, I basically look at where the words are versus how the block is. So I'm just temporarily setting this piece of paper here so I know where the middle is, which is more around here versus over there. And I know it doesn't look like there's a lot of ink on there, but <laughs> I think there is enough. So that, boom, nice. So that says happy birthday to my beautiful friend. And while we have our stamps out, let's stamp this as well. So you guys, I've punched all of yours as well. So, oh, there's green paper here. Okay, so that is in crumb cake. And let's clean this. So I love the bat, the triple banner punch. I think it's actually called banner triple punch. And it's actually more than a banner triple punch. The reason that they call this a banner triple punch is because it can punch at one one and a quarter and one and a half. But honestly, you can do any amount in the middle here. Like this is one and three eighths and it's gonna work just fine. And I did banner punch because you can just barely see the little, little banner hanging over there. Depending on where you stamp your sentiment and where you tie your ribbon and where you put your shells, you may or you may not end up with these little tails. So. I had in class a couple people that stamped the sentiment over to the right more and then their shells got moved over to the right and then it covered up that. So just know that that may happen to you. And if it does, that's okay. But this is one and three eighths. And what you do is you don't wanna follow it on one line here. Like you don't go here. You wanna try to center it right in the middle of those lines because this is one and three eighths and it's really set up for one and a half but it's not all the way in. I always have it to the point where I bring it back as far as I can, and I just try to center the so it looks about even for me, and that's what banner punches. So all of you guys that are doing the online class with me, I did that already, but if you didn't have me doing that for you, you could take your scissors and cut it right in the middle, and then what you could do is go from this side and this side and meet it right in the middle. Okay, so there's the banner, triple banner punch, or banner triple punch, or whatever they call it. And then I'm gonna stamp, the friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. So you guys are all my seashells <laughs> because I'm collecting all of my seashells and all of you are friends, right? Once we meet, we become friends. That's how <laughs> stampers work, right? <laughs> we're, all, we're all in this together. So I'm gonna make sure I stamp a little bit more to the left than to the right because I wanna make sure that I see a little bit of my banner tails hanging out there. All right, so, and that was in crumb cake. That's it for stamping, guys. <laughs> that one's an easy one. 
nothing crazy. Now let's get to some assembly. And what we can do is, this is a linen thread. This is where it works out good if you have a buddy system. <laughs> Somebody can hold it for you, and but I don't have a buddy. So if a buddy was there, they could hold a pencil or a scissors down so that you get a really nice tight uh, bow. It's not, I'm gonna not do a bow, I'm just gonna do tail ends here because this could be a more feminine or male masculine card if you have a bow on it. So this is where if you're, <laughs> yeah, you gotta use all your fingers to get it to go nicely. All right, so that's just tied there like that. And then I'm gonna just snip the ends a little bit. I didn't give you guys enough to make a bow. I intended it to be just the ends tied like that. So that's kind of prepped and ready to go. Then let's keep going here. So you can flip that over and put a little bit of liquid glue on that. And then what I try to do is line up one of the edges, like top or bottom, and then the side edge. If yours is a hair long or a hair, sh it shouldn't be a hair short, but if it's a hair long, um, just take your scissors and trim a little bit off and then you should be good to go. And then we're gonna put this ribbon. So you have this, this trim right here. Grab your tear and tape or your tape runner. I saw a demo use the reverse tweezers to hold the ribbon twine. Yeah, that would probably help. Hi, Faye. I hope you had a good meeting and you learned lots <laughs> and saw some good demonstrations. Okay, so we're making our little ribbon sandwich here. So flip that over and that's gonna go right where the sand meets the paper. Oh, let's get that there. And then I'm gonna grab a couple more here and put that over the top. And we're gonna glue this now onto our piece of seaside spray, the mat, like the quarter sheet of paper. So put a little glue on here. Oh, let's do a little in the middle. Why not, <laughs> for good measure. Then grab this quarter sheet here. Now this is very important that, you know, you, well, I guess right now it could go either way, but this is gonna get put right onto this mat. And you're trying to get your, I think it's about an eighth inch so this is where the liquid glue comes in handy. You can wiggle it till you get it where you want it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. And like that. Then it's very important on this that you only put glue on this triangle piece right here. And I like to use the liquid glue and put that there. And if you want your waves going this way or that way, however you want them, doesn't make any difference. And you're just lining up the top edge and the left edge here so that they're nice and flush. So you don't have any overhang either way. And we're just gonna go up a hair so that you don't see that white. Okay, now for our banner, I'm gonna pop the whole thing up with dimensionals and I'm gonna squeeze two of them maybe three, we're gonna do three, on the left margin of the linen trim. And then we're gonna put a couple more here. You have to be careful because you don't wanna put dimensionals where it's overhanging there. And we're gonna do one more <laughs> right there. They're little, you can use more when they're little, right? And that's gonna go on to, <laughs> we're gonna do one there too. And this will go kind of, I have it a little bit north of the equator, and the equator to me is always the middle line. And I don't have it all the way to the edge, but something like that, and like that. And then these, there's two of them that go on the outside. So I have, and again, you can't put any adhesive here. Oh, well, I guess you could, but I left it off completely. I only glued a little bit of this shell flat on the bottom here. Where's the top? Oh, uh, there. <laughs> I think shells have a top and a bottom. So that little bit is gonna go off to the side here. And then he's gonna hang out right there. And I did put him on with dimensionals because I don't wanna have the dimensionals hanging over. Oop, he moved. Then I'm gonna just put a few of them right there. We're gonna see how that works. And I could probably do one more right there. I just don't wanna have dimensionals hanging out 
where you'll see them. And so this will go something like that. And see my little banner ends are hanging out then. And I didn't risk them, you know, by putting dimensional there. And then these are left. These are what help, just basically the one here is popped up and the other one's flat. And so I will put a couple dimensionals behind that one. And then the other one will get a little liquid glue. So how I have this, these all were different sizes, guys. So when you see this card right here, this shell is a little bit bigger. That, when you do this one, they're all gonna be different where this one and this one will always be the same size, but these were a little different. And let's see if I get it right. Okay, yep, that'll go like that. And it's gonna go in the bottom corner here. And let's see, some like that. It could actually hang out just a little bit further down. So this is all up to you how you want your card to lay. So don't squish them down until you have it setting where you want. So I did that one first. And by using only two dimensionals, then there's room for this guy to tuck in right next to it. Oh, thanks, Angela. <laughs> I will Stella the shells. That guy's gonna tuck in right there. And Stella's off a break and she needs to do a little work. <laughs> so she's gonna Stella our shells right here and this one right here. And we might as well do these. <laughs> There you have it. The rest of the story. Boom. Card number two. How do you like that? That wasn't so crazy. <laughs> I hope not. You guys think it's pretty? That's awesome. Yes. It's just this card, the colors were so soft and soothing. I don't know, like it's the seaside spray with the Sahara sand. I think that is Rococo rose and so saffron. So you open it like that, it's just a different layout for a card. And it just, it's nice because it still stands up straight. Hi, Kathy loves the card, yay. So I love it when cards stand up straight. So, all right, number two is done. We're gonna do this guy number three next. Oh, it just makes me happy. <laughs> it's petal pink with Knight of Navy. I like that it stands up. That's awesome. Oh, let's get some stamps out of the way. The stamp set that's used on this one is called Pretty Perennials. I was uncertain about the Pretty Perennials because it's, again, another flower set. And how many of us have a lot of flower sets, right? <laughs> oh, I needed another flower set. Like, I need a hole in the head. <laughs> and when I started working with it, though, I was beyond happy that I have this set. <laughs> I love it. And, oh, you guys, I want to show you. This is the card from Tracy Sorgi from many years ago. She made me this card. And I've been holding on to it for the Write Fun Folds class. And so this is where I got the idea from. You guys remember this little sloth hanging there? That was from a few years ago. So Tracy Sorgi, thank you so much for your inspiration with the layout. <laughs> So that's where I got that idea from. And so, see here. You guys will have in your kit here a bunch of pieces. And you're probably going to find this one. And you're going to be like, what did she do with that? Well, I cut your happy out of this mat. And I think that you also will notice, I, don't, I didn't do it to my sample, but I made all of your happies into stickers for you. So... When you are looking at your happy, if you flip it over, there's white paper on there. And don't do it now, but when you're ready, you're going to peel that off and it's going to make you a sticker so that you don't have to try to glue all that, which is awesome. So what you can do if you need to is pick out any little pieces out of your happy. So you have Night of Navy here, Paddle Pink, and this is from the In Blooms or the Blooms DSP that is free with a $50 purchase. And I've got for you guys... Hi, Janet. I've got for you a piece of petal pink, a knight of navy, and I've made a stitched white square or rectangle for you. Um, and that comes from, so let's show you what I all have here. You guys, I love the stitched rectangles. That's where this one came from, the stitched rectangle. And for your stamp set here is pretty perennials. I just... It's so fun. I like the outlines here. There's a few outlines and this uh, leaf is an outline. And I'm gonna make sure I had it in here. Uh, the words are awesome. But I do not want to put this big happy 
on this layout here. It just was too big. So this happy, it comes from a set in the annual catalog that's called A Wish for Everything. And I think the dies are called Well Said. And they're all full of little words. So let's just show you really quick. I didn't bring those dies down. They're up in my craft room, but they're right here actually. So it's called, oh, it's actually called Well Written and they're all words. So the happy worked really nicely with that versus using the whole big happy and then having you guys fussy cut that. That wasn't what I, that wasn't gonna be fun. So this is called Pretty Perennials. It's a bundle you're gonna want to get. I can pretty much guarantee that sometime you're gonna get that if you like flowers. Uh, your petal pink is five and a half by eight inches. So you do have to cut off that quarter inch, um, actually the half inch on the side. And it's scored at two, three, five, and six. So all of you guys have your card kits that you are doing the class with me. You have them, you have them scored already. So let's see, this goes like this and like that. And then grab your bone folder. Yeah, I know I love putting the word at the word that happy went perfectly with that. And then this one folds this way and this way. So all of you have yours folded, but they are not bone folded. They had to be folded to put them in your kit. So that's how your card is gonna go. If you ever get any kits from me and you have little snaggle tooths of paper, I try to make sure you don't have that. I try to cut them all off, but if you do, just grab your scissors and you can trim them off yourself. I try to catch all that, but sometimes the trimmer does it and I don't always catch it. So there's the front of our card here. Uh, I made the, the mat here petal pink light so that if you wanted to flip it over, you could write a little love note on the back to whoever you give this to. So I know because there's not really a spot here to write or stamp a sentiment on the back. So they're gonna get the message happy birthday on the front and you can hand write something on the back. In your kits, you have two pieces of designer paper. Pick how you wanna see them. Like if you think, oh, I like that flower right there and it's at the top, cool. But maybe you're like, oh, I like the green here, but you can't really see it, so then flip it over and then you can see that the green is there. So pick how you wanna see your pattern paper and then that can get glued down with whatever adhesive you like. The green on the back side is really pretty here too. So let's put this one goes over here and the margin on this isn't an eighth of an inch. It's actually a hair less than an eighth of an inch. I did my whole 3 sixteenths <laughs> on this one for you guys. Okay, so that can go flat and glue down here. So next I would say for you guys that have the kits, this is what's gonna be next, but you have to know that I did cut out the happy a little bit more north of the middle so that this chunk goes up higher. Um, av so what I did is the sticker sheets, let's, oh, I have them right here. I can show you guys, I think, let's see. Oh yeah, so these are how the sticker sheets come. And so they are, they, they're, it's like a lot of people in class said, was it like a Zyron sticker maker? Kinda, yeah. So what I did is I cut one inch strips and then I could peel off a little section like that. And then I put that little section on the back of your paper I put the die where I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I had to guess every time because I couldn't like see through it. And so then I cut out your happy. And what you can do then, if you want, is you can either peel, so that the back of it, you can peel that off and use that as stick, or you can leave that paper on and glue around it. It really doesn't matter. But what you wanna make sure that you do is whatever section here is smaller, that goes towards the top. Oh, bye, Danny. We'll see you later, and you can catch the rest. Just make a note where you're at with the, the minutes so you can fast forward to this part. So now what you can do is glue this on. Again, if you want to peel off that part that has the sticker, go for it. And I think that I have less, or I have less blue here than there, so that's my top. And that goes here. Now, when you're doing this card at home, if you wanted to add another strip of different DSP there, you can. It's all up to you. So that goes here. But don't worry about that because I promise you it will get covered up. <laughs> I know you were really probably worried when you saw it at first, but don't fear. I have a method to my madness. Okay, so the birthday. I had in class people could, they, they could do for you. So happy for you. A couple people did that. Um, happy mail also fits though. So in this set, if you had something, any 
small words that you have will fit there. So I do have mine done already. I stamped birthday from that set. It's Night of Navy. And what you can do is, oh, you guys, I'm still using up the name tags from the Winter Creative Escape. <laughs> so I had a couple of them that were wrong. And I don't throw away paper. I use the other side. So that little stitch rectangle goes on this mat and then flip it over and put a little glue here on the Knight of Navy to bring that so it sticks to the petal pink rectangle. You saw on Tracy's, she did a circle. The circle looks pretty cool too. So you could do whatever you want in this middle section. So the, the layering circles, the stitch circles, anything looks good there. Now when you do this, it's very important that you don't put adhesive too high or too low or too far out the sides. And so what I will do on this too is I'm gonna basically put, oh, I got them stuck together. I'm gonna set this here and then I'm gonna put one there and there. And I'm gonna guess that goes there. And we're gonna do one there. And so I'm not putting any dimensionals back here because I might risk them going out too far. So I'm definitely putting them on the card base again in this instant. And then let's shut this. Now I do have that this pink is a hair short on that side. It's not, this is not four inches. It's actually like a 16th <laughs> less than four. So we're gonna go like, Something like that for this okay so it's a little bit more than the middle and then in your kits you should have a soft sea foam leaf that's a die from this set so pop out your inside pieces and that's gonna get put there and then you also should have the flower so you guys have I did two things for you for the online class. I didn't know if you had the stamp and I didn't know if you had the die. So everybody's got a white flower that looks like this. I just die cut it. So if you don't have this stamp set, you could take a sponge with a really pretty soft pink and you could sponge the flower to give it some color. You could leave it white if you wanted. The white wouldn't look bad either. You could take a sponge and frost the edges. You could take your blending brushes. However you wanna put a little color on here, you could. Now, if you do have the stamp set and the dies, I also gave you a white piece of paper that as a square like this, you could stamp your center or your flower on there and then die cut it, okay? So I gave you two options for how you wanna do your flower because I never know. You guys will have to tell me, is it a waste for me to give you both things? Would you rather just have the, the, the plain white piece and you do what you want or do you like getting this kind of stuff <laughs> with it so that in case you don't have the die cuts, then you can do it. So what I'm doing is putting a little glue dot right in the middle of this flower. Now this does, oh man, that was perfect. I was gonna say, this outline matches up perfectly with the solid image on the back too. So rotate it until you get it to match up just right. Then, how I put this down, I, I am not one to tape things together like this because I might do it wrong. So what I like to do is lay things down where I think they're gonna go and we're gonna put that right there. Now what I'm gonna do to put that down, I'm gonna put a little piece of tear and tape right over it. That's all I'm gonna do because now I'm gonna follow up with some dimensionals on this one. You colored the, that's perfect Kay, you colored the flower with your petal pink blend. Yep, anything to get a little color on there would work perfectly. And I'm just gonna pop up this flower with some dimensionals right about here. And you guys have some, let's see here, where it is. Okay, now this, I was not nice to myself because I did not make myself a sticker. <laughs> so before you put this down though, it's good to Stella it. Uh, I like both the die cut and the other piece just in case. So it gives you options, right Kay? That's why I do it. I I just never know what you guys were gonna be. Everybody's different. So I like to give you guys both sides of the equation in case um, one will work, right? Okay, so Stella that. Oh, we should have stella this too. So Stella is doing a good job. She's remembering to come out and make face tonight, which is good. Uh, we're just gonna do the whole thing, guys. <laughs> just go for it. And we're gonna get a little bit of green. So when you need to replenish Stella, you click or squish the push and the push and 
more stuff will come down the barrel. You just have to be careful not to over squish her because she will run out. Deb likes options too. Okay, so when I'm sitting there and I'm die cutting stuff or I have a helper die cut, I often wonder, well, what do you guys like? <laughs> so it's good to know that you like the die cut and you like to have the piece just in case. Because in class, I give everybody just the, the square and they'll stamp and they'll die cut, but I can't do that for you guys. So you guys now are at the point where you can peel off the waxy paper on here and you can... <laughs> put yours down. What I have to do, I got to put a little bit of liquid glue everywhere I want it and stick this down. Oh, you love, I got this at TJ Maxx. I don't know. And this one I got in Greece. So when I earned the, the Greece trip, uh, Sandy, you said you love my ring. That one's from TJ Maxx. They have great jewelry and that one's from Greece. I got it at a little quaint store. So this is going to go on, on the front of your card here. I'm trying not to have the Y go over too much because I want to be able to read it. When it's hanging over the edge, it kind of disappears. And I don't want to go too close to the middle. So you guys should have three uh, opal rounds. I have a big one that I put in the middle. Hi, Jennifer. And then I have, I did not, Jennifer, I did not get your butterfly or um, no, your strawberry cards yet. So the mail did not do me good this week for you. <laughs> All right. Okay, the other thing I didn't show you guys though is Night of Navy and Petal Pink. And <laughs> these were the stamps right here. This was the stamp and then the birthday. So I had mine done already. So that, that's what I used for when I did mine in case you guys were wondering. Sorry, I kind of missed that. And I think that we have our third card done. So got a little fuzz up there. Get off of there, little guy. And there you go. So I don't think anybody ever told me uh, what, what 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 the name of this is. <laughs> it's a different kind of a card. I love it. You guys, if you really like showcasing designer series paper, this is a great card because you can put all of, like on Tracy's card here, she used designer paper for all of them. So that is definitely an option. If you have a really pretty designer paper and you can put it on these panels, that would be awesome. So there we have it. Card number numero tres is done and on to my favorite one for last you guys the daisy card you stamped a flower with a navy center on the envelope perfect sandy that's awesome that works great yep don't forget to decorate your envelopes girls <laughs> all right oh it's so pretty let's just look at it really quick that daisy paper just it had me at daisy <laughs> uh this is from the flower and field designer paper it's free with a 50 dollars purchase and it is available while supplies last as it gets closer to the end of celebration. So make sure you don't wait too long. Remember, if anything, you ever need orders, uh, you have my host code here, and that's always active the night of the live. But afterwards, you can always find my current host code at cardsbycrispy.com. I really appreciate when you guys use the host code. Uh, when your orders are over $150, you don't need to put the host code because then you get your own host credit. But if your orders are under $150 and you don't put the host code in, <laughs> I call Stampin' Up to have them add the host code back to the order so that it could qualify you guys for a free class. So, because remember with a $30, a $35 or a $40 purchase, you get a free class. So, um, so that's how I know some of you don't always put the host code on, but I'm sending you card kits <laughs> because I can go back and stamp it up so gracious about putting the host codes on orders. But if you guys can remember to get my host code off of my website, that is amazing. Okay, so Mary still her parents home craft caring for mother who is in hospice. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, well, hopefully you can find some things to t take your mind off of what's going on and, and make some time for yourself. And watching stamping videos and getting inspiration and creativity is always, oops, always a good thing to do. So we have here another flower set, girls and guys. <laughs> I was really confused. I made the other card first, and then I made this card. And nope, actually, I made this card first. And I accidentally paired up these dies with the other stamp set. I was super confused. And then I didn't even know that I had two new flower bundles. And... I learned it later on, but I almost have to pick this flower set over the last one because 
If you guys don't know me by now, you're gonna learn that I love stitching. And all of these dies have stitching in them. And there's a label, there's a bow, there's a stem, there's different leaves, there's different flowers, there's different insides. It's awesome. Like, I love this die set. And the flower set, this stamp set that goes with it is amazing. There's different sentiments. I would pick this. Um, I didn't use these sentiments with the card. I actually used happy thoughts and I love the sentiment in here that says just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. You guys know that that's what I love to do. And so that's what is on the outside. And on the inside, you could put thinking of you. This one has happy birthday. It has thank you. It has congratulations. Yes, Jennifer, my favorite DSP from the celebration. And I don't know, almost the entire catalog was this flowery paper. It's so pretty. So this is a double easel card. And what's awesome about it is it also stands up. So it goes like that. And if you wanna see it from that way, it goes like that. So your base here is your hot dog style card. It's your traditional mat or base. It's 11 by four and a quarter, and it's scored at five and a half. Uh, when you get your card kits out of your envelopes, if they ever, your corners don't ever match up, just match them right back up. You, so, Deb, you ordered Pretty Perennials first, then you had to have this one because of the awesome. Absolutely. I think I ordered Pretty Perennials first, and then I got these. And when I went to design, I didn't realize that. So, I have these are the dies for In Bloom, and then when I did my inside, that's actually from Pretty Perennials because I thought Pretty Perennial stamp set went with the In Bloom dies. I, I was so confused. And then I finally figured it out, and it all is good. <laughs> so... This piece of bumblebee is 10 and a quarter by four. It's four because that is what makes the mat here. And then it's scored at five inches. And then it's also scored at two and a half. So basically 10 and a quarter, which will give us our mat of four by five and a quarter. And then we'll fold this back and which makes, this is now even here. So this is what makes the card do the double easel. And it's as simple as this gets glued onto here and then this gets glued onto here. And so this is another one where you get to showcase the designer series paper. Um, yeah, exactly, Marielle, Marilyn. This, these stamp sets, like if you had to pick one, definitely pick the one that you like more and you could interchange them, absolutely. You could put the same flower dies that I just used right here and here. <laughs> the, the stamp sets are so similar. Um, so if you don't <laughs> need both, pick whichever one you like better <laughs> and go with that one. So we got a little bit of gluing here. So this has a really cool black with granny apple foliage on the back side here. So that will get put on to the bumblebee piece and no top or bottom to this. How, like I, I don't think there's a top or bottom. So go ahead and just get that centered on here oh, without it wiggling on too much. And then flip that over and that's gonna get adhered to the black card base. Um, I stamped the thank you in the inside. Now these flowers are from Pretty Perennials. I had mentioned that when I stamped, I was confused, but there's a very close stamp here that this one's from the In Bloom, so you could definitely uh, stamp whatever flower you want in the inside. I'm just prepping here the glue so that we have that ready. Janet, I love the daisy paper too. It makes me happy. <laughs> this card just is so full of sunshine and happiness to me. I, after I got done, like, so I cased this card as well, and I'll show you the card that I cased. Um, I, I cased the layout, but I used all the different papers and different colors, and I just, I love the daisy. It just, I finished it, and it just made me happy. It made me smile. So this goes on the inside. Whoever gets this card is gonna be one lucky lady, or man, <laughs> depends. <laughs> so this is, the, okay, so we have the sweet Stitch So Sweetly dies, and they were from last spring catalog. They carried over to the annual catalog. And you guys, in your kits, you will have a die cut like this, and you will have a die cut like this. Uh, once you stamp whatever sentiment you want on the white label piece, 
then go ahead and adhere that onto the yellow bumblebee label piece. You have in your kit this black piece. Now, it's really, oh, there you can see it. That, I've never used this embossing folder until this class. So I'm very happy that I did. Because <laughs> it's always nice to use something at least once. So this, um, you could, could you, could you have cut the scalloped yellow piece out of the card base? Absolutely. Yes. Luann, you could have definitely cut this. What she's asking is this yellow piece right here. Could you have cut that out of here? Yes. You could have. I didn't feel like doing that on all of your card bases for all the kits that I did for class. But when you're at home and you want to do paper saving or conserving, cut your yellow piece out of there because it gets covered up anyways. You are absolutely 110% correct. Um, for this embossing folder, it is in the back of the book here. It's one of those halfers. And it is called... What is it called? It is this up here. Huh, I know it's something with meadow. Metal Moments, and it's the one on the side here, and it's a halfer. So the embossing folder is only this big, and it's thin. And so you only have greenery down on the bottom here because the top part will get covered up anyways. So flip that over, put some glue on the back of that. That will go down here on the bottom. And our label then... It's gonna go right here. Now figure out where you want it. I'm gonna put it somewhere about there. And I, ah, oh, you guys, I remembered. Black dimensionals. So this is the perfect time to use your black dimensionals. And I'm gonna put a row of them there. And I'm gonna put a row of them along the bottom here. So it's like the price is right, girls and boys. You are close to the edge without going over in both cases. All right, because now you're not gonna go over the edge there and you're good there. So then you wanna have a little bit of black showing on the left and the right. Put it up high enough so that you got a little room for your flower and greenery at the bottom. And make sure it's as straight as you can get it. That's always good, right? All right, we have to do a little Stella-ing. So, we, okay, and I don't know if you guys will notice this, but when you're feeling your flowers that I made for you, they are thick white cardstock and they have a different hue to them because of the white thick cardstock is not quite exactly the same as the thin, but they have the sturdiness to them and they feel awesome. So all of these little bits and parts are going to get die cut, um, stellar. And you should have, so all of these are from that set. So you have this four pointed, but it actually has eight points for this flower. And then this is a five pointed flower and that's in the thick white. You have this inside flower part in bumblebee and then the little one and then a little bit of leaf, leafery, <laughs> leaf action, this and then this. So it's always easier to Stella before you adhere it down because then you can just slap it on. <laughs> My mom would say slap it on. Okay, putting it together, grab a mini glue dot, mini glue dot. And it goes on the front side of these two small leaves. And when you put that on your flower, you're gonna split it so that you have a white going right through the middle. And so that's stuck on there now. And then what you're gonna do is grab, a, I'm gonna grab two dimensionals and we're gonna put two of them right around the middle area. Oh, let's make it three, just for good measure. The main thing, bye Jean, we'll see you later. Um, the main thing you want to do is not put adhesive right there so that um, you don't accidentally uh, make a trick card and shut it. So I wanted to get this one like that. Let's just check the back bit. Yep. So I was, I was clear on my dimensionals. I did not go over the edge. And then what we can do is put a little dot. I truly love that you get to it in no time. <laughs> I know, right? I'm a fast stamper and, and Tyler just actually, I heard the garage door open. So Tyler told me he wanted to make dinner tonight. So um, he just got here. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not so bad. I got one card almost like to the very end and then we're gonna do some prize giveaways. Hi, Dar. So Dar, we're almost done with the last card and I have a PDF tutorial I will be sharing with you because you did this class um, live with me. 
And so that will be coming up in the next day or two. So here's what I'm doing. I'm prepping this area to put my flower. Now this has already popped up and this one down here is down low. So what I'm gonna do is peel that off and I'm gonna double stack that one because that will make my flower flush then. So those four should be plenty for this to stick. And now don't worry about your leaf. I've got the leaf, I can figure it out, but I wanna get this kind of situated where I'm kind of covering up that corner area and getting it nestled in there like that. It's all about how corners and angles kind of come together for me. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys are like that too, but I like things to be aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And I only put dimensionals there, so now I'm gonna be able to slide this wherever I want it. Oh, Christy, aren't those dies just to die for? Oh my goodness. So little guys work perfect on, oh, you guys, wait, 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 wait. Let's, oh, he might be stuck in there. I have black dimensionals, hang on. Oh, I'm, it's okay, they're only dimensionals. They make more every day. So we're gonna go for the gold here and we're gonna use the black one. Look at this, a brand new sheet. Okay, so because of the, we're gonna be putting it onto something black, we're going to use the black ones. And they're little, so when you get the black dimensionals, you get um, two sheets of the big ones and two sheets of the small ones. And I'm not gonna put one on the top leaf because it's gonna be hanging over the top of the sentiment thing. So now this should sneak right in here like that. And you can kind of turn your leaves how you want them to lay. All right, then <laughs> we got a hot mess going on here. Now we need a little bit of glue right in the center for this yellow, I think the stamen, that's what that's called. Um, hi, Cindy, late to the party, but you're here and thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Okay, you guys, I got a lot of stuff going on here. I need to move out of the way so we can see the final finale thing here, the, the touch, the final touches, the finale. The black matte dots, oh my goodness. They are amazing and they are perfect on this card. And I only gave you four, so don't be mad at me. Now, if you have these at home, you can always add more, but I gave you four, which is not usually the rule of thumb, but I looked at it that this big one is the center of the flower. It stands by itself, <laughs> okay? Then I, have, I gave you three more. I don't know if I gave you too big and a small or too small and a big, whatever it was, there was three extra ones and they are on the label. So these were my three and this was the center of my flower and that's why I did four. I had a hard time. I know in class somebody put one in there but it just didn't look right. It was too much. I felt like having these three was your odd number as we talk about for floral arrangements and then this guy was by himself. He's a flower that has a center that's a black. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I just, I love this card so much. <laughs> Makes me happy. I want to make a hundred of these and send them to all of you. <laughs> but I don't have time to make a hundred of this card. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, so one of you will get this card. So I'm not sure who. You guys, all the liking and the commenting and the sharing is what gets you into the drawings for these cards that I give away. So I always like to do a, oh, I don't know how I'm going to hold these. Let's do this one over here. Oh man, let's see here. We'll do like this. So I like to show them all to you in a final, because then sometimes I can get a good screenshot to save as the thumbnail for this. But oh man, do you have a favorite? Oh, I do. You guys know what my favorite is. It's the Daisy one. But I know like Jean Maxwell loves the, the Friends, the seashell set here. I know some of you like the navy with the perennial and a lot of you like the berries. But oh, if you had to pick just one, would you pick just one? Could you just pick one? Oh my goodness. I don't know. <laughs> I can because I absolutely love this one. So, all right. Well, that is what I have for fun folds for you guys tonight. I hope that you learned. Oh, Rebecca loves the daisy. Okay. Everybody loves them all. You guys are so sweet. You love them all. You love them all. <laughs> so pretty. All right. So, um, that's, I gotta take a drink. You guys, when I talk for two hours, I don't I get water. I gotta come up for air. Okay. So you guys like the daisy, you like the cards, very pretty good. You guys like them. So just remember, um, 
my next fun folds class is coming up in June and you guys can like, I, I know I don't have any of the cards made, but I know a bunch of you like to just pay for the, the card kits. And I generally, if you're paying for card kits, I take RSVPs anytime, but how I do it is if you want to place an order to get any of my classes for free, I always take the order in the current month or next month. So I don't bank orders for like months in advance. So you can always tell me that you wanna sign up for classes, but if you're telling me that you wanna sign up for the class in May or June, you always can place the order then come April or May. So, or like the month before or the month of the online class. It's usually, that's how I usually work that. So, oh, I'm glad that you like the cards. Good, good, good. Sandy likes the blue card with the fold. Awesome, good, good, good. So we're gonna do two more things. Um, we're going to announce the winners of, where are they? The cards, the love cards. Oh, they gotta be back here. Hmm, that's that. You guys, I just had them out here. Oh, I know why I can't find them, because they're right here. You guys, I did something else too. I think you're gonna be happy. I know some of you are watching and you're going to be some winners. I love it. Everybody's a winner with me, but sometimes you get gifts for being a winner. <laughs> so, um, hi, Valerie. I went back from January 1st to the end of January. Well, not January 1st, but like when celebration started. And every week that people placed orders, I when you use host codes, I put your name in for drawings when you placed $50 or more. And I did some drawings and I have four people. So for the four weeks in January, I pulled names and I have free stamp sets that I'm giving away because when I close those workshops, so when you guys use the host code, I use the host dollars to buy supplies and to get prizes. And there's something, I know Valerie, you're new. I didn't recognize your name at all. So I'm very happy that you commented. <laughs> so Valerie, if you want my class schedule, you can find it on my newsletter section of my website. Um, and I post that. Um, it's always current. So you can always find my current class schedule. So when you guys, when I close workshops that were $300 or more, I ended up with all of these stamp sets. They're the punch party stamp set. You can only get them for free with a $300 workshop. So I'm thinking a couple of you got them when you had your, your orders that you put in. But I went through January's orders and I found <laughs> a list of names and we pulled some winners. And I have these to give away and I have the love cards. So what are we gonna do first? What are we gonna do first? What are we gonna do first? We're gonna do the cards last. We're gonna do the punch parties first. Okay, so drum roll. <laughs> You guys, I'm all by myself doing that. But yeah, the winner is D. You are the lucky winner, D Serena. You are the lucky winner of a punch party stamp set. You go, girl. Okay, thank you so much for your order. Everybody, thank you always for your orders. When you use my host code, it really makes a difference with helping me get prizes and you, you know, getting the products to send out to you guys for your kits and stuff. And so when you use those host codes, it gets you free card kits too when your orders are over a certain amount. So I appreciate it. Bar Barco, you are the lucky winner of Punch Party stamp set number two. Yay, congratulations, Barb. I'm not sure if you're watching. Um, so Cheryl, do me a favor. Cheryl, this is my email address. I have a hard time remembering posts as like when you guys are coming through here, these are flying a mile a minute. <laughs> so it's always best if you send me an email and tell me you want to be on my email list or that you want to be getting my newsletter. So, all right. I entered two separate orders of over 150. Should have added them together. Deb, you know, that's a good thing to do. Yeah, that makes sense. If you know you're going to be putting a $150 order in and then another one, you could combine them. Thanks, Kathy. Um, okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner of number three part punch party stamp set is Elaine Reback. I don't know if you're watching, but you are the lucky winner for one of these stamp sets. And drum roll, brrr, winner, winner, winner is Kathy Dali Nagari. You are a lucky winner. So you guys, just know that I have more punch parties that I'm gonna be earning and I'm gonna be giving them away to people who order from me. And I really appreciate your orders. You keep me going. Um, it allows me to do these uh, Facebook classes for free. And you know, when you get kits from me, I gear them to the people who get the kits, but it, it benefits everybody who watches. So. When you guys place your orders, it I really, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And I, I love being able to give away stuff to you guys. So then, okay, my cards from last week. Ooh, are you ready? Okay. Oh, I'm going to save this one for last. That is my absolute favorite. So this one's second last. Oh, you guys are all so pretty. Okay. 
Winner, winner. So, um, yes, Latokia, you, um, so different from the demo code. So the host code is this and it might be the demo code, but the host code is this. And you guys, before I go any further, I'll tell you really quick how you always know what you do for the host code. Um, sometimes it's so weird. Like one time, Kay, you used it on your order and another time you didn't. So I'm not quite sure sometimes, but you guys can always find my host code. If you go to my website, Cards by Crispy, and you go to my story, and this is just the easiest way to always find it. I always keep this current. So it's underneath that picture of me at a convention and it's always right there and it has a link and it also has um it's got it just there that you want to do that and what you do when you go to put it into you guys this is learning this is good for you <laughs> so when you go oh that looks really weird that looks super weird so wait let's start that over um i have a app for stampin up let's see if that works okay that looks much better so when you go to your cart what you guys do is down here it says host code and you just enter that host code right there. That's all you do. And as long as you have that in, before you go ahead and check out, that means that that helps build it on the workshop. And then that's what helps you guys get free classes from me and then for me to get um, stuff I can give away. All right. And the winner winner is, okay, Colleen Anaker. I really butchered your name there, but A-N-A-C-K-E-R. Colleen, you are the lucky winner of card number one from last week's class. Drum roll. Brrr. Okay. This one is the fancy frilly one. <laughs> winner, winner, Patty Ross. P-A-T-T-Y, Patty Ross. You are the lucky winner of this one. I do not know you. I need your address if you'd like me to send you this card. <laughs> and winner, winner brrr, is... Carolyn Denstedt, D-E-N-N-S-T-E-D-T, -E -E Carolyn Denstedt, you are the winner of this gorgeous, beautiful card. I don't know you either, so if you want to give me your address, I would really appreciate it. You guys can email me them, or you can find me on my website, um, my Facebook, the, the Messenger. Okay, you guys, my favorite card, Brrr, and the winner, winner, last, last chicken dinner, Joanne Adams. A-D-A-M-S, Joanne Adams. I'm not familiar with you either. So I will definitely need the three winners of these two, three cards to give me their addresses so that I can mail your cards out. Colleen, I'm pretty sure that you did a class with me recently and I have your address. I'm, I am should be good on yours. So whew, you guys, we kept it under two hours. We did good. And I, uh, Tyler went into the house and he started a fire. So I don't know if you guys know it. I have a wood burning fireplace in my house and he is like, as much as I love stamping, he loves fires and making fires and cutting wood and doing all that stuff, which is awesome. So he's inside making a fire, a fire and he's surprising me with dinner. So I not only got date night on Tuesday night, but I'm going to get date night tonight, which is really weird for a Thursday night <laughs> because normally it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so we didn't finish though yet. You guys, we almost forgot. I almost forgot. And then I looked in the camera and I saw the celebration board. So we have to do the drawing, the last, the grand finale for tonight, you guys. We're going to do a drawing for a $25 gift certificate. So not only the stamp sets and cards, but this is my sixth, going to be my sixth $25 gift certificate that I'm giving away since January 4th. So K1 and Danny one and Kathy one. And, oh, you guys, um, Denise won, Joanne won. So we're going to do drawing number six right now. And then, Kay, you're going to get your name on the next board. I already forgot your numbers. If I had to guess, they were 17 and 9, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Send me a reminder. The mind goes crazy because I go a mile a minute. So, you guys, are you ready for this one? Okay, we got a lot of names on there. A lot of different names on there. So we're going to see who it is. All right, drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> so Diane Bogenhagen's not here tonight <laughs> to do that for me. So, all right, I'm going to flip it down. See what number we are. Oh man, it's number 24. Okay, we're going to flip the camera, flip it back up. We're going to pull the board. Oh my gosh, Dar, are you watching still? Dar was live here with me. Dar picked number 24. 
if I'm not mistaken, it was your anniversary or a birthday. I know it was something like a lucky number for you. So you won a $25 gift certificate. You go, girl. All right. So congratulations to all the winners. You gals are all winners in my books, even if I don't have a prize for you tonight. So sorry. <laughs> but you guys are always so amazing. And I love you so much, so much that I just look forward to doing my lives with you. And come the fall, I'm working on my schedule. And in some cases, I'm going to be, I'm adding an online, another online class. You know, I'm crazy. Um, Mo would say, I'm crazy. Yes, this girl is crazy. So um, I'm looking at adding another online class so that there's most of the times there's going to be weeks where it's two times a week, always, <laughs> except for one week out of the month. So you guys are phenomenal. Your support is amazing. And the feedback that I'm getting is that you're loving the videos and you love the community that we have and just the positivity. And you guys are so awesome for helping it stay positive in here as well. Like we do that. We make that happen. That's not just one person. We do that all collectively. So um, because of that, I feel like we're, we're, we're doing amazing things and we're bringing happiness and sunshine and love to everybody, right? <laughs> so on that note, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week and have great weekends. I'm thinking that I won't, I might pop on live to do something sometime before next week, Thursday, but if I don't, I'll see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. Central and we're gonna make the monthly cards. And if anybody wants to sign up for them yet, I have 10 more sets ready to go in the mail. We prepped extra. So if you decide you want to do them tonight or tomorrow or even say, well, I'm leaving for Stevens Point for tomorrow night. I'm visiting my brother, um, Tyler and I are, and we haven't seen his new apartment yet. So we're going to go visit him for a couple days. So, um, but at any point I could still mail them to you. You might not have them in time for Thursday to make cards with me, but you would have them at any point to make them. So I do have a bunch of sets left over and then also sign up for anything that you want and just always look for confirmation from me that I got your, your sign up and then everything's life is good. <laughs> so, all right.